This is Matthew Cratter from Trader University. And today I want to show you how you can create the next Bitcoin if you have the intelligence and you have the ambition. So there are basically two main ways that you could create the next Bitcoin. The first way is you could fork Bitcoin. The second way, of course, is to build a brand new crypto. So solution number one, fork Bitcoin and make it better. This is actually the easier option. You basically just copy Bitcoin source code. It's open source after all. You can just download it off the internet. You make a couple changes, release it to the world, and voila, you have a new and better Bitcoin. Maybe one, maybe you make it faster, or more scalable. Maybe it has bigger blocks. The only problem with this though, this strategy has never worked. All forks of Bitcoin have collapsed, both relative to fiat, relative to US dollars and euros and yen, and most importantly, relative to Bitcoin. So if we look at the two largest forks, there is Bcash, and that's basically almost gone to zero against Bitcoin, if you take a look at this chart, and BSV as well, which we talked about yesterday and all of the mess surrounding it. So forking Bitcoin, you can try it, but this has not been a successful path, unfortunately. So that didn't work, so let's try solution number two. But before I talk about that, if you're finding this video helpful so far, I just ask you to hit that subscribe button. So solution number two is you build a new crypto that is harder, better, faster, stronger. Let's just get my developer friends together. Let's get some VC funding, some venture capital funding, funding to pay for the project because these devs need a salary and let's start coding. Now devs and VCs, as I said, need to be paid. So let's give them 48% of the future supply of the coin, just to be fair, because they are the early investors in this and the early devs. Voila, you have just invented Solana. Now VCs need to dump their Solana in order to pay their their LPs, which are what you call the investors in their VC funds, their limited partners. Devs need to dump their Solana, all, all of their initial token allocation, just like the VCs, but in this case, in order to buy a house in the Bay Area, where Solana is based and the houses are quite expensive there, as I can tell you. And so you have the situation where both VCs and devs are natural sellers. They go on podcasts and they laugh about dumping. If you wanna see how the Solana billionaire VCs were laughing at you, I made this video back in November 5th of 2021, almost right at the peak of Solana. And we can see what Solana has done since then. It looks exactly like a pump and dump, as you would expect for a VC funded coin. This is a list of initial token allocations for a lot of these base layers, these public blockchains. You can take a look and see where your coin might be. Solana was especially egregious at 48%, but you can see the red in any of these. Binance was obviously heavily insider driven, uh, ICP, Flow, etc. And uh, even Ethereum obviously had a large pre-mine. But this is what you need to do if you're gonna develop a successful complex software project you need to pay for it somehow. But it gets even worse though, because those coins that I issued to insiders, so this is option number two, where I'm starting my own crypto, I issue these tokens to VCs and devs. These coins that I issued to insiders, they actually look a lot like an investment contract. And in the US, we have the Howey test, which is the language goes like this, the investment of money in a common enterprise, with a reasonable expectation of profits to be derived from the efforts of others. This is clearly Solana, this is clearly almost all of these cryptocurrencies. Now, the thing about the Howey test is you wanna fail the Howey test. If you pass the Howey test, that means you're considered a security in the US and you need to have registered with the SEC. Ethereum, Solana, Cardano, you name it, all of these are clearly unregistered securities and it's almost it's only a question of time before the regulators catch up to them. And worse, it's an unregistered, unregistered security that they've been dumping on naive retail investors. Take a look at the pain that's been caused here. And that was mostly uh, retail investors who bought the bag at the top. So Solana, all these coins, they're clearly unregistered securities. They've been dumped on naive retail investors. And so to any neutral observer, what has been created here is not a new neutral form of money, Cardano, Ethereum, Solana, these are basically software companies. They can use whatever legal moniker they want. They can pretend to have a foundation uh, like Luna did, etc. But these are basically software companies. XRP is another example, Ripple, XRP. These are software companies that have been funded by selling unregistered securities. And XRP is obviously, Ripple is obviously being sued by the SEC for this reason. So 
we can say that's okay. We don't care about the SEC. We don't care about the, the Howey test. We're cool libertarians. We don't care about Gary Gensler or if he thinks we're using unregistered securities. And besides, we did our ICO in Japan or we did it in Switzerland or something to try to skirt these rules. Okay, that's fine. But the problem with this is, do you really think that the world is going to adopt a new money where insiders were allocated a 15% or 20% or 30% or 48% of the initial supply? Doesn't that make that money completely non-neutral from the start? So if you're pursuing this route, this is the point at which you need to reassure investors and future holders of your money. You can just say, don't worry, our crypto is on an eventual path to decentralization. In fact, we will show you our roadmap. We've got the merge, the verge, the purge, and the splurge. And in case you think I'm just making that up, this is the Ethereum roadmap that has been set out by the bold leader, Vitalik Buterin. The only thing that's kind of strange about this is that you are claiming, or Vitalik is claiming, that Ethereum is ultrasound money, or at least the Ethereans are claiming this. But this ultrasound money has a leader, it has a CEO that has created a multi-year roadmap. This doesn't sound like a decentralized thing to me. And the other funny thing is the only thing that's not included in that roadmap is Vitalik leaving the project. And it's again, I don't wanna pick on Vitalik, this is Ethereum, this is Cardano, this is Ripple. These founders never, ever leave. Or if they leave like Jed McCallop did, they do it in the process of dumping on everyone. So this is what these crypto projects have done. They play these games. Let's just pretend that there's no one in charge. As I said, let's do our ICO in Japan or Switzerland to avoid the SEC. Ripple, the corporation, did not issue XRP. It just magically ended up with most of the supply. These are the excuses you hear among various projects. Okay, but that's enough cynicism. Let's do this for real. Let's not be cynical. We don't want to do a pump and dump. We are going to make the perfect money. We're going to make it fungible. We're going to make it private. We're gonna make it decentralized from the start. We're gonna use ZK Snarks. We're gonna uh, make it perfectly fungible, no dev fee from the block reward. We're gonna use delayed proof of work. We're gonna do a fair launch, just like Bitcoin. If you recognize this, congratulations, you just invented Pirate Chain, which is uh, the ticker is A followed by a number of R's, not quite that many R's. The problem with this is, and this was a very idealistic project, at least it appears to me to be one, the problem is no one cares. You can take a look at the chart of R. And if you try to do this like Pirate Chain did, it's very unlikely that it's going to go anywhere. Most people don't care about privacy, unfortunately. And it's really kind of a niche uh, subject for most people. The other thing is it's hard to get the word out about your new crypto unless you have a large marketing budget. But the problem, as we said, is you can't have a large launch and a marketing budget without a pre-mine or initial investors who compromise the neutrality of your new crypto from the start. And this is the really special thing about Bitcoin. Bitcoin was a grassroots movement. It grew under the radar, both the radar of VCs and under the radar of government regulators, etc. And now Bitcoin is everywhere and it's forming real communities. We obviously have podcasts and YouTube channels devoted to them. And we have whole, we have meetups, we have whole countries devoted to it as well. We have Bitcoin Beach in El Salvador. We have El Salvador adopting Bitcoin as legal tender. We have Bitcoin Island in the Philippines. These Bitcoin communities are popping up all around the world. So what are our conclusions about inventing our new money, inventing the next Bitcoin? As we said, there are two ways to do it. You could fork Bitcoin, but no one's going to care. People know the game. People know you just fork it and dump it on people like Roger Ver did, for example, with Bcash or Craig Wright has done with BSV, in my opinion. So you can't really fork Bitcoin. No one will care that game is up. This has been tried. You can try it, you might be successful, but it's probably gonna fail in the same way that Bcash and BSV did. The second way you can do it is you can set up a software company. Of course, you don't call it that. You issue unregistered securities and you dump them on retail investors as part of your funding. Good job if you do this. There's a special circle in hell, in Dante's hell reserved for you right next to the usurers. So now I hope this, this intellectual exercise or thought experiment has demonstrated how special Bitcoin is. Bitcoin is special, not just because of the technology, not just because of the blockchain. It's very special because of proof of work plus the blockchain. And it's very special because it was launched and initially distributed to a bunch of math nerds who care nothing about Lambos and riches. And there weren't any VCs in the room either. It grew under the radar. It grew up free from government interference. The founder, 
left the project very, very early on and never sold or cashed in. We're talking about Satoshi, of course. No one cares that you can form a software company and create a new blockchain that has big blocks or can do a gazillion transactions per second because that's not neutral money and that's also not a fair launch. Blockchain is actually a really bad way of doing most things. You're almost always better off with a centralized database. And the only reason a lot of these software companies are using blockchain is because they can create a token that they can then use as a way of raising money without having to go the traditional route of registering with the SEC. And this game is rapidly coming to an end in the US, whether you like that or not. So what's the next Bitcoin? Bitcoin is the next Bitcoin. And I've said this many times, Bitcoin is the next Bitcoin. Bitcoin was a one-time brilliant invention or discovery, however you want to label it. And it was a historical accident, an accident that was brought about by a very smart individual named Satoshi Nakamoto. But this historical accident can never be repeated. And that's what I mean when I say that true digital scarcity can only be invented once. I didn't invent that saying. I can't remember where I heard it, but it's a very, very good one. True digital scarcity can only be invented once. It was Bitcoin and it is Bitcoin. So it's impossible to create the next Bitcoin for all of these reasons. And if you're ethical, and if you understand how these things work, it's not a, it's not a question of a new technology. It's a question as well of that fair launch and initial distribution under the radar, which is no longer possible simply because everyone knows about cryptocurrencies now and there's no way to repeat this wonderful historical experiment that has turned out and is turning out so well. If you found this video helpful, be sure to hit that subscribe and like button. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.